yeah so um this is a vegetarian soul food video so i'm gonna just jump right in no need for a long intro you see what it is those are some beautiful beautiful collard greens and kale mixed together y'all know how to wash y'all greens wash them thoroughly pick them good all right guys for these greens i'm gonna start with a little bit of my avocado oil y'all know that's my favorite oil if you've been watching me long enough love it okay i am going to put some onions just a little bit some onions in here let those cook a little bit i'm gonna grab some garlic Alright, so you gotta let that sweat a little bit. Not uh, too long because your garlic will burn up quick on you. Let that kind of cook down. Ooh, that smells so good. In the meantime, you wanna gather. You know, better than bouillon, the vegetarian no chicken base. Because it, this, these are vegetarian greens. We're not using any meat in these greens, so you gotta get your flavor game up. You're also gonna get some vegetable broth. Even when I cook greens with meat, I always use a broth. That's really what makes your greens is a good broth. As long as you have a good seasoned broth, you win now. You win. This is one whole 32 ounce. A whole 32 ounce um, carton of vegetable broth. Clean as you go. I'm not going to the kitchen. Let that warm up for a little bit. Come up to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, then I'm gonna go ahead and add in my uh, Better Than Bouillon, a little bit of broth. All right, I'm going to add a heaping teaspoon of the Better Than Bouillon vegetarian. Kind of swirl it in there, just let it melt down into that broth. This will make for a good, Flavorful, garlicky, well seasoned broth. From there is the easy part. All of this is pretty easy, y'all, and foolproof. You start adding in your greens. Start adding in them clean, thoroughly clean, picked greens. If y'all can see, these are collards, and I got some kale thrown in there. I'm not a mustard and turnip kind of girl. I love me some collards, and I love me some kale. So go ahead and just get that added in. Y'all know my, my collard green cookers, my greens cookers in general, you know how you gotta let that cook down, and then you just go ahead and keep layering and add you some more. So. Once all of this gets good and in this pot, I'm going to let it cook down and then I'm going to add seasonings to these greens to make them even tastier. Alright, so we're making some progress. What I am going to do next, sometimes I put it at the beginning with the broth, sometimes I throw it in as the greens start cooking. I always put a jalapeno pepper directly into the pot. Just take that tip off of there. Not completely cut it, cause this will cook down soft enough to bust open and then start getting some of the heat from the jalapeno pepper. These are homegrown out of my garden, but I put one right on down in that pot. Then once they cook down a little bit more, 
I'm gonna add my apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna add some different seasonings, probably some chili pepper flakes, a little bit of cayenne. Uh, we'll see, we'll go from there and we'll get to tasting and just like you season up your greens with meat. It's just without the meat. So you gotta really uh, kick it up a notch. I am also going to add just a wee bit of liquid smoke because I'm missing that smoked meat. So when you're eating meat free, it's still delicious. You just gotta think out the box when you do things. Okay, so as discussed, I'm gonna add some seasonings on in here. I am gonna use a little bit of this high green seasonings. does not need a whole lot of salt added to this pot because your veggie broth and bouillon is salty enough and there is salt in the hot green seasoning. So I'll probably taste later on when these cook all the way down for salt. I am gonna use a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Discuss a little bit of liquid smoke because we're not using smoked meat. And when I say a little bit, y'all, a little bit goes a long way. Otherwise, your food will be tasting like an ashtray with that liquid smoke. And then it is not a lot, guys. Just a little bit. I'm gonna use a little bit like a pinch of sugar. That is not to make your green sweet, that is just to balance those flavors. It's spicy, it's vinegary. It's got the, the sweet in there, it's balanced. So I'ma let these cook down and do its thing. This is my little baby pot. Um, so these greens ain't gonna take no time to cook down. My Thanksgiving big boy pot is up top, but this is the baby pot of greens, so these ain't gonna take nothing. I'ma put a lid on it, drop it down, let it cook down, retaste, re-season as necessary. All right, y'all, we're getting ready to go into our meatless meatballs. Sounds crazy, but it's not. I start with my avocado oil, as I always do. Y'all know me long enough have been watching. I always use avocado oil, but you use whatever oil or grease you want. Saute up some white onion green pepper, red pepper, and yellow pepper. I'm also gonna add some garlic right into that same pan. Okay. I try to have some measurements for y'all at the bottom in the description, but y'all know how we are. We don't do too much measuring. You just keep on putting that in there to the answer to the same stop. Saute this up till it's a little translucent, and then we'll get to the next step. Same pan now that this is cooked down a bit. I'm gonna add some fresh thyme. It's an aromatic, you just want it to open up those flavors. It'll really flavor up your meatless meatloaf. All right, I had to do a voiceover for this part as I had some company at the house. But anyway, you are gonna do your Beyond Beef um, for this vegetarian meatloaf. I like it, it flavors up pretty well. You can season it just like you would normally season you up a meatloaf. If you can see, I got some garlic powder over there, some smoked paprika, Italian seasonings, panko bread crumbs. Uh, let's keep watching and see what else I have over there.
Okay, take your sauteed veggie mix, pour it right into that Beyond Meat mixture. Get it good and down up in there. Don't y'all miss nothing out of the pan. You mix it up very well. Listen, if this is for you and your household and you want to get down and take your hands and do it as long as they clean, have at it. That is your business. If you somebody that's kind of funny like me, I don't like stuff in my hands, I'll throw, uh, I'll throw gloves on and just um, mix it up with the gloves. There's the, pan the panko breadcrumbs that you see me putting down in there. You'll see all the rest of the ingredients that I put down. Just keep watching, y'all. I'm just adding a little bit of flour just to keep it all together. That's just the binding agent. Okay, y'all, off camera, I have molded this and got this into the pan, just like you would for traditional meatloaf. Clean off your sides real good, and then I'm gonna show you how to make um, your ketchup and brown sugar topping to go on it. Looks good, right? So that loaf goes into the oven for about, I put it in for about 12 minutes. After 12 minutes, I take it out, add that glaze, that ketchup uh, brown sugar glaze that we made or sauce, pour it right on top and then I put it back in the oven for maybe another 10, 11 minutes till I see it gets real shiny looking and sticky. So yeah, I had to cut into it, match your business. It was too good. I had to taste it, taste it, taste test. You know, we gotta make sure it's good. Now on to these sweet potatoes. Get into it. This is simply some salted butter. You hear me? Salted, not regular. Salted butter. Things that are sweet, you should always use a salted butter to balance out that sweet and those flavors. So the salted butter, brown sugar, I squeeze the juice of a lemon in there. That is some vanilla flavor from the Dominican Republic. Uh, some cinnamon in there. And that's really about it for your sauce, but you make your sweet potatoes however way you want to. That's the way I like mine. All right, take you some vegetable stock and some water to boil your pasta. Those there are our cashews that I have soaked overnight. Just showing you're gonna be using some nutritional yeast which gives you the cheese flavor. Onion powder, garlic powder, I'm sure it's paprika up in there. You got your black pepper. That's smoked paprika actually because regular paprika don't taste like nothing to me but that smoked paprika give it a good flavor. You're gonna need some silk or uh, any kind of nut milk. Right here, as you see, I used um, in my, my blender there. Get you a powerful blender if you have one, if you can afford it. You're gonna take those cashews, 
you're gonna uh, put those overnight soaked cashews in that blender with some nutritional yeast with your almond milk with your seasonings you're gonna get them well mixed and incorporated Okay, here I have some turmeric. You're gonna add a little bit of turmeric in your mixture just so you can get that good orange color for the macaroni and cheese. Now that though that your veggie broth and water is coming to a boil, go ahead and dump in your pasta noodles. Let those cook box time as long as it's al dente. Then you wanna strain, of course. I never rinse off my pasta when I strain it. You want to keep that good flavor from the veggie broth on it. Go ahead and put it down into you a casserole dish that has been buttered. Mix that butter up in there to season those noodles up even more. I end up switching out to a larger pan. You'll see, you'll notice that later on, y'all, because I had just so much. I had to get a larger casserole dish. Things happen. You overestimate, underestimate, whatever. You got some Daya cheeses, mozzarella, and your cheddar. And you mix that all together, just like you would a traditional dairy field, um, non, you know, non-vegan macaroni and cheese. So I understand how it looks, but I promise you, it turns out real good. <laughs> 